Hey guys, what's going on? I'm out here at Salt Lake City Airport right now because I'm going to Sundance. Yeah, I'm waiting for my Uber currently, but this is the vlog. It opened up with a beautiful view and everything, and I just wanna say thank you. Enjoy this vlog. Enjoy all the early movie reviews you'll be getting on this YouTube channel, and of course on wolfgeektreat.com where I'll be doing all my written content as well. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you wanna catch some other things, scroll up and see everything that I've gotten to do. But in general, I'm gonna try and put as much as I can into this vlog. It might be two parts, might be one. We will find out, guys. Thank you guys so much for all the support, though. I'm here is press all for you guys so without further ado let's go into Sundance all right guys officially got my press badge right here Sundance official right there and I'm currently heading to my first theater walking there I'm planning on seeing Uncle Frank Kajillionaire and a bunch of other films so let's get to it this is gonna be a blast guys thank you guys again and Stay tuned. So this looks like a perfect place for me to be able to talk about the first two films that I saw today at Sundance. I have two more tonight. Uh, the first one I saw was Uncle Frank, which stars Paul Bettany and Sophia Lillis. We might know Paul Bettany from films like Avengers Endgame and whatnot as Vision. And of course, you can also jump in and talk about Sophia Lillis, who is from It. Uh, I really liked Uncle Frank. It was one of those movies that kind of follows the typical beat of a road trip movie, but it, what it has to say by the end is kind of the things that I really much appreciated. It's really heartwarming, and uh, the, I don't know the actor's name, but the, his, his partner in this is one of the, the guy should be everywhere. He, he was great, and then when you jump into Cachillionaire, which has Rachel Evan Woods and uh, Gina Rodriguez and Robert Duvall, it, it really excellent movie i loved it it's absolutely my favorite film of the festival so far even though i've only seen two and i'm sure that could probably change but it's very subtle genuine and the more that i think about it the more i like it but let's get going day two of sundance 2020 and having a great time and i got to see two more films last night um that i didn't get the vlog yet so we're going to talk about those i got to see save yourselves which is a cute little quirky romantic comedy that it was really fun and I thought that all the sci-fi elements really much worked in it. The humor I thought could have been a little bit better, but I thought the message was super strong in it. And then kind of just, oh, look at that. Look at that pose right there. Look at that. Just sleep right there. Uh, also, I got to see Possessor, which was a unique little horror film. Well, it's not really little. Um, the thing about this one is it is directed by Cronenberg's son. It's his second film, and it is, I have no idea how it would not be NC-17 because it was one of the most glorious things I've ever seen, and <sighs> it's something. I didn't think the execution worked all the way, but I thought what it was going on, the concept, everything within it was quite unique. I will have a full review of all these. These are kind of just my reactions. And then the first two films I got to see today was Palm Springs, which was absolutely my favorite film so far the festival. It's from the Lonely Island crew. Absolutely loved it. It has groundhog elements of it, but it's also this endearing romantic comedy that kind of took me back and harkened back to the, the big sick days, and I loved it. Um, easily my favorite favorite film of the year so far. And even I got to go just swapped out of Amulet, which was good. Um, a little... Again, it's just different. It felt like there was two different ideas kind of fleshed into there. The horror elements though in it, when it gets to it, it's not creepy. So, but I'm gonna be heading over to Wendy B. Peter Patton retelling. So let's go to it. All right, I'm currently walking down this beautiful uh, driveway that my Airbnb is currently at. This is like, literally like, out of all the places I've ever been to, this is straight up one of the most beautiful, like, I love the snow, I love all this stuff. Um, in general, just like, take a look of everything around me. Like, it's crazy that I'm only like 10 minutes away from a city, but it's like this gorgeous. And uh, yeah, um, I just love going places and uh, I love, I'm gonna do it like a little tour of my Airbnb. Um, this vlog's gonna be a little bit weird, uh, kind of just like what I like to do with my vlogs, just talk like, a little bit sporadically about it, and uh, it's gonna be a little bit weird the way I edit it, because sometimes I forget to record stuff, 
and I'm gonna have to add like different little segments in to make it like very cohesive and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it, it's gonna be weird and I appreciate you guys getting along for the ride. Kind of shows my personality in that fact, but uh, overall like the trip so far for Sundance, this is easily my favorite film festival I've gone to so far. Um, I've been to, well, when it comes to film events, I've been to Comic-Con, I've been to South by Southwest, uh, Phoenix Phoenix Film Festival, Phoenix Comic Con, uh, Sandy or not Sandy, um, why well, I haven't been to San Comic Con, but uh, also Scottsdale Film Festival, and I've loved each film festival I've gone to, but I there's something about this one that's just special, and I can't I can't stress that enough that if you've never gone to a film festival, you should really look into going to Sundance because so far almost every film I've seen I've liked. And uh, it's just so genuine. Everyone here is so nice. And even though it's cold as shit, well, not cold. Shit isn't. Is shit cold? Even though it's cold as Elsa's heart in the first Frozen, I would say that this is just a beautiful thing. And yeah, let me, let me push my feet. Boom! All right, guys. I'm gonna get in my Uber, and we're gonna head out to the next adventure. So look forward to new stuff. So just like I promised, uh, as I start vlogging more, since I keep forgetting to film stuff, because I'm dumb, uh, I just the weirdest Uber driver. Like, he wasn't weird, he didn't talk too much, but he was very Russian, he was Russian, with the Russian accent, and it was, uh, I tweeted out this, because, uh, it was pretty scary, I thought I could die, I'd share my location with some people, but, um, the guy, freaking, <laughs> didn't talk at all, but we get in the car and he puts on this classical music, this feels, like, very sinister and, like, and... What happens is, I, I wanted a better view, I like, I like right here. But what happened was the guy, oh, maybe this one's actually better. But what happened was, as we are just sitting in the car, it feels like I was going to my destination that I will not return from. Uh, the music's ramping up. Um, it's like this Russian classical music. It was really weird, really scary. I survived though, and now I'm going to get on my wait list. Um, I skipped the last thing he wanted because it's a Netflix film, and last night, that premiere, it was not the best stuff, which makes me sad because, sorry, I was looking at my shoes because I thought they were untied. Uh, it was not the best uh, reactions. And I would rather see Nine Days because I'm really looking forward to this film. Um, I'm planning on trying to see Nine Days. Minari for sure, gotta see that. And I think I've already talked about this in the vlog, but I'm repeating it because I'm bored and I'm cold and I'm just trying to survive. So let's get into that waitlist line, fingers crossed. A very nice man gave me a studio for nine days. Guys, that was an emotional one. I'll actually put the picture up here, but I finally got to meet Zazzy Beats from Nine Days, Deadpool 2, and Atlanta, of course. And she was just wonderful. We had a great, heartfelt little conversation about the film, about her career. I also got to talk to Winston Duke, one of the most humble guys I've ever met. And then, of course, I got to meet the director of Nine Days, who's just, <laughs> let's talk about Nine Days. Nine Days is one of the best films I've ever seen. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and I just, I can't wait to see it again, and you'll be hearing about it all year long, especially for the Oscars. It's it's truly a feast for the eyes, and it's really just takes a whole perspective on what life is. Really loved it. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep walking. I'm cold.
think it's, what is it? It's day four now of Sunday. I'm at my Airbnb. I'm waiting for the Uber. This is my beautiful view every morning. And I'm just here to kind of talk about how today's going to go. Um, I'm trying to get some tickets for bad hair. Uh, summertime as well. But I'm seeing Spree for sure. And I'm also seeing uh, Zola finally, the A24 films. So I'll be providing reactions to those. Last night, I got to see The Horse Girl, which was very weird. Um, it, it's different. It's very different, to say the least. And reflecting back, I liked it. But I also felt like the ending kind of was the thing that didn't catch me around the most. Um, it's quite quite unique to say the least. I'll, I'll say that to be sure. Watch it on Netflix this seventh, and let me know. I'll probably have a full review up on my channel as well. But we are going out there. We are going to the snow, and it's gonna be a fun time, guys. Day four. Let's go. I'm tired. Alright guys, day four has been going off for a great time. Uh, just got done watching uh, The Father, but before that I actually saw Zola, which is the brand new A24 film, which I loved. Um, Zola was great. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I actually really like it. It's based off that famous Twitter thread and it's kind of disgusting, but it's a weird fantasy. It's told in the way of a fantasy, but it's also told as like a once upon a time type story. And I actually really liked that. And the father itself was actually really good. Anthony Hopkins proves again why he's one of the best actors working. And at 82 years old, this guy killed it. Um, what a fascinating film on the way that it, it puts you into the shoes of a man going through with dementia. It, it's truly astounding how they were able to capture that and truly make you feel like you had dementia. So excellent ones. Now we're heading on to spring. Moving on to day five of Sundance. Uh, kind of forgot I was getting really tired yesterday, but um, the last film I saw yesterday was Spree, stars Jer Um, Of course, you know I'm a Steve from Stranger Things, and I love the movie. The more I think about it, the more I love it. It is truly the American Psycho for this generation. It's American Psycho meets Eighth Grade meets freaking um. Uh, <laughs> there's so many different things that it's mixed up between, but I loved it for that part. It's psychologically fucked up, but at the same time, it has a good message. It's entertaining, while at the same time, kind of scary. Uh, I had a great time with it. So looking forward to the films today, I have like four to see. And then I have five, I think, to see on Friday. We'll see if I get to all of them, but this should be fun. Let's get to it. Thank you guys for all the support and let's go. going on guys i'm going back to my airbnb to chill for a bit um just kind of walking up this beautiful surface and i got done watching run sweetheart run which was really good um when blumhouse tilt comes out they're always different type of movies because i'm a fan of blumhouse but 
when tilt when they're a little issue they're like more independent so that does something they did upgrade which was a big surprise for me but run sweetheart run was also a big surprise for me too because essentially about a girl who goes on a date and it turns out very sinister she has to run home and I think for this generation of Me Too and Time's Up type stuff, this is like a perfect movie. And I actually think the allegory inside of it, while a little bit too on the nose, I actually dug it. It, it, it worked for what was going on. So it won't be for everyone, but I thought it was intense, thrilling, maybe too many jump scares, but it was fun. And at the same time, disturbing. But I really liked it. I was surprised. But yeah, I'm out of breath because I'm walking up this hill. But I'm heading up to my Airbnb. I'm going to take a nap, record a bunch of reviews that I need to do. And a lot of them will probably start, well, most of them probably start posting already before I finish this vlog. But um, yeah, so look out for that content. I need a nap. All right, guys, we have awakened from my nap. I feel a little bit better now. I'm going to see Sylvia's Love. Might see another film tonight. Still kind of deciding. Uh, currently uploading two reviews right now. Uh, I filmed a bunch too while I came back. Um, probably gonna film a bunch more on my last day before I head to the airport and then edit it all at the airport while I'm waiting for my flight. Um, remember, I do have a bunch of written reviews as well. There will be written reviews for every single one of the movies I saw. Um, and a majority of them will also get video reviews right away um, within the next couple of days, two weeks. Um, just kind of depends when they're coming out or not or how passionate I was about them. But it will be fun, guys. We are going to see Sylvia's Love. So excited for this one because it stars Tessa Thompson. Um, I'll die if she's there, though. Like, if I can meet Tessa Thompson, my life will be made because I already met Zazie Beetz. And I want to meet Tessa Thompson because they're both two of my favorite females superheroes ever. And I just love them as actresses, too. So let's get to it. What's going on everybody? That's my beautiful view. That was my crazy weird accent. Today is my last day of Sundance before I leave tomorrow. Uh, go to the airport, sit at it for pretty much all day and do all my reviews until I go home. Uh, Sundance has been great. I have a huge lineup of films to see today. I'm still debating on a couple here and there, but overall we have the likes of Bad Hair, Promising Young Woman, um, Downhill, and then there are a couple others in them that I'm still deciding if I wanna go to. Uh, so we'll, we'll see on that, but this is gonna be an exciting adventure, guys. Thank you guys again so much for all the support. But let's go to my last day's Sundance. What's going on, guys? Oh, man, it's been a busy morning, and I've already seen two movies I got to see this morning. I got to finally see uh, Promising Young Woman, which starts off as a film that you, you think you know where it's going, and then it changes very fast to something that you don't know. It has easily one of the most satisfying endings I've seen to a movie in the last couple of years. And I, I, I loved it. I love the performance that Carrie Mulligan gives. And she should be a household name at this point. And I thought the script was great. Direction, awesome. Ah, sorry guys, I just ate as well. <laughs> um, the other thing I just saw was also Summertime, which is directed by the guy who did Blind Spotting. Interesting movie. Um, it's very inspirational and it's also the celebration of culture and life in LA. And I just loved it in that whole entirety. It's a little clunky at some parts. Some of the acting is not the best, but it's enjoyable. Now I'm heading out to my next film, which is Bad Hair, um, which should be a lot of fun. I've been hearing good things about it. It's a horror film, need that. And then I also have Downhill tonight, and I technically have Impegator tonight too. Debating on that one, because it's this horror film, and I'm, I don't know. <laughs> um, kind of tired, kind of want a nap. We'll see on that one though. What's going on guys? I am officially done with Sundance. I'm tired as hell. I saw 21 films and I will be definitely having reviews for all of them. A uh, majority of them will have ri uh, written, well actually, so here's how I'm going to do it. Most of them will have written reviews over on Wolf of Geek Street. And then video review wise, most of them will come out within the next two to three weeks. Any that I don't do, I'm probably holding off until more buzz comes out about it or in general until it actually comes out. 
but I'm officially done. My last film I saw today was Downhill, which starred Will Ferrell and uh, Julia Louise Dreyfer, I think that's how you say it. She's from Seinfeld, I love her. Uh, this is based off a remake of a movie that I've seen glimpses of, but I'm planning on actually rewatch. Well, I've seen it, I just don't really remember. I just remember that there was a lot more to it than what this remake had, and the remake was entertaining. There are some fun moments to be had in it. I just, I left kind of feeling unfulfilled, and in general, it's not a straight comedy. It's very much dealing with a guy who's very insecure and just kind of a failing husband slash father to this family. It's, it's interesting for sure. And when it comes out, I'm curious to see the reaction from people because I think they're going to think they're getting a straightforward comedy and it definitely is not. But that was my last film with Sundance. Um, there were a couple films I missed that I definitely wanted to check out. And uh, I will be having, again, tons of videos. I'm going to be ranking every single film I saw at Sundance. I'm going to be doing the... Um, the top five most films that you must see. There, there's gonna be a lot of Sundance content still within the next couple of weeks, so do look forward to that. But as my first time at the festival, this was fantastic. I loved this festival. Um, easily my favorite film festival I've ever been to. I love the location. It might be cold, but I just love the snow. I love the atmosphere. Everyone I met was really nice, and there wasn't like one bad volunteer. Everyone was super nice. The whole festival was organized, and I, I pretty much got to see every single film I wanted to see, which was kind of good. I was going into this festival. Every time I go to a film festival, I get really nervous that I'm not going to be able to see everything, and in general, I only missed a couple films that I truly wanted to see, but in general, they just were like not playing at the right times, and uh, I didn't get to see The uh, Worth with Michael Keaton. I didn't get to see Iron Heart, Iron Guard with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, I didn't get to see The 40-Year-Old Version, which was another one I really wanted to look forward to. Um, a couple documentaries I didn't get to see. I didn't get to see um, Impegator, which was a horror film I really wanted to see. Same with The Night House and also Jumbo. Um, I, it's funny, I actually had tickets for those three. I just, they were either really late at night or in general, it was like right after another screen. There was no way I was going to be able to make it, which sucks. Um, that was my part. I kind of learned this year that, hey, you sometimes got to take a break. And next year, I definitely know how to plan my schedule just a little bit better, especially around the press and industry schedule, which really I love that this film festival does that. South by Southwest, uh, please do that. It would make, make everything so much easier. But this was a great festival. I had so much fun. I got to meet a bunch of people. I didn't get to meet everyone, though. Um, and I didn't even get to see all my friends. A pair weight, I'm talking to you if you're ever watching this. Um, for some reason, she was the only critic that I'm friends with that I didn't see the whole entire festival. And there was actually one point where we saw, we were in the same theater for the father and I didn't see her at all. Um, so yeah, but this was a great festival. And uh, right now I'm actually currently uploading my review for Zola, which should be up by the time you are watching this uh, i'll probably post this later i don't know this is again this is, i vlogs are very different for me they're i kind of talk through my thought process as i do them and as i edit them and in general this is kind of the finale of my vlog i'm um, not very exciting but it, it's in general adding to it pretty much the back end of this will just be my journey home on the airplane yay maybe or i might just end it after this who knows um that's the process of editing but guys thank you guys again so much for watching this is it means a lot um, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. A lot of you guys keep asking me to do more, and I tell you I'm going to do more. I will be doing one for South by Southwest, which should be a lot of fun because I am staying with Sean Chandler, uh, Griffin Schiller, and Mike from The Real School. And also, I know there's a bunch of other critics going too that I hope to catch up with, uh, say, per se. Um, I think Jared Buckendall's going. I'm pretty sure 3C Films is going, and I'd love to meet up with them and whatnot. So I, I'm excited. And I'm excited for this year of film. I'm excited for what is coming down the line. I have many things to announce very close to. I hope I can announce within the next month and a half. Um, and yeah, uh, guys, keep looking out for more content soon. Thank you guys again so much for all the support. And in general, you guys make sure to stay classy. And if you're new here, hit that like subscribe button, guys. But again, stay classy, guys. Enjoy the rest of the vlog. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. All right, guys, I know I said the end of the vlog, but I'm not wearing my currently wearing my Sundance shirt. I'm kind of bored. I want to add more to it. Um, I'm currently walking down this long crevice of a road because my Airbnb was up there and I have so much stuff on me currently. I cut my hand too, trying to pack and everything, but I, hopefully I have everything. I have my phone, my wallet, my iPad, and my laptop. The, the three most important things I possibly need, uh, all my shoes, all my pants, all that sorts of stuff, all my candy, and now I'm finishing walking here as I'm waiting for my lift. Um, this was a great adventure, and 
I don't know where else this vlog's gonna go. Could just end pretty abruptly like some movies do, but that's life. That's all, folks.